Prisons are becoming America's biggest old people's homes. Now, the country that locks up more people than anywhere else must deal with the consequences of a growing prison population. Growing old in prison is hard. You know, they just struggle with the reality of just, you know, being in prison. They don't believe they're in prison. They don't know why they're in prison. You know, that's the biggest struggle I see most of the guys have, you know. Samuel Baxter is an inmate here at the California Men's Colony Prison in San Luis Obispo. Almost every day for the past four years, Mr. Baxter has helped elderly prisoners get dressed, eat, and get about prison. It is a confronting job. He was an elderly, elderly gentleman, about 70, and I used to take him over to the clinic to get uh, his insulin shot. So I remember one morning I came down, and he was standing in the cell, and I think he had uh, a shoe in his hand. And he was just standing in the middle of the floor crying, you know. And I tapped on the door, and I called him by his name, and he just looked at me, and he was like, what am I doing here? In America, some 2.2 million people are behind bars. And the prisoners are getting older. The number of people over the age of 65 who are in prison has doubled since 2007. In fact, aging men and women are the most rapidly growing part of America's prison population. In part, this is the hangover effect of the 1980s and 90s, when a perfect storm of high crime rates and tough sentencing laws caused prison populations to soar. I've uh, been a part of that growing population of elderly, so I've, I see it all the time. Philip Burdick is 64. He works alongside Mr. Baxter in a program called the Gold Coats. The volunteer inmates who become Gold Coats are carefully screened, then shadow an experienced volunteer, sometimes for several months of training. Older prisoners often have special needs. Some have problems with mobility, others dementia or mental health. Dr. Steed is one of the supervisors of the program. From a physical standpoint, they're challenged. Many of them develop motor difficulties as they get older. We have a hard time uh, for a lot of them to go up and down the stairs to the dining hall. Many of our elderly patients also experience difficulties with dementia and uh, difficulty with memory. And that's challenging for them from the standpoint of not remembering what the routine is, not remembering what the rules are for the institution, and not remembering simple things like when they have an appointment that they need to get to. It's showing that the dementia is set in, or he's, doing, he's going down. Caring for the elderly behind bars presents unique challenges. Prisoners can have the physiological age of someone 10 to 15 years older. Inmates tend to age faster, I think, than individuals out in the community, in part because of the high stress of the environment. It's a constant watching your back kind of process where they have to keep an eye out for other inmates and what's going on and are they you know, vulnerable in some way. As soon as you can't take care of yourself, you're a victim. And there are predators that, that will take advantage of that. Glenn Kreitz has been in prison for 44 years, since he was 20 years old, for murder. He remembers catching another elderly prisoner, nicknamed Pops, staring at him. Somebody introduced us and he kept looking at me like, he was Mad Dog, we call it Mad Dog, and he was looking at me like, you know, who the hell are you? And I was taking offense to it. Pops had Alzheimer's. He was trying to remember who Mr. Kreitz was. And in prison, little gestures will get you in trouble. He didn't fight Pops, but older inmates are more vulnerable than younger ones. What we do as Gold Coast is, we, you know, we protect them. Because we're around when the CO's not around. You know, we see more than the officers see. You know, because we're down here with them, like, all day long. Just making sure they're okay. Of the 1.6 million inmates in state and federal prisons, a tenth are serving life sentences. Many politicians are now keen to reverse this mass incarceration, but long-timers seem unlikely to benefit. In California, a bid to reduce prison populations means less serious criminals now serve time in county jails or in the community. The inmates left behind tend to be the ones serving longer sentences. These are often the elderly. 
America spends about $16 billion every year caring for older inmates. The Gold Coats program aims to allay some of those costs. Volunteers are paid a mere $36 a month, a fraction of what outside help like a nursing assistant would cost the prison. And it's tough work. A lot of the inmates appreciate what we do, but a lot of them don't. And here, if you're a rat or a snitch or something, there that stigma, and you get that stigma on you, and then uh, you can you can have some serious consequences behind that. So there's always that uh, sort of uh, danger. Despite the challenges, the Gold Coats continue to help their aging counterparts. Mr. Baxter has a particularly personal reason for wanting to do so. His mother had dementia. When she came up to see me, she was just this little quiet lady. She didn't say anything. She just sat there and just looked at me and smiled, you know. And I was like, okay, so what's going on? And my sister was like, she just don't remember you. You know, when I look at these guys, I look at my mother. What if she was in a facility like that? You know, how would I want her cared for? Mr. Baxter is serving 35 years to life in prison for fatally shooting a man. He had his first parole hearing in March but was turned down. He won't receive another review for at least five years, and he's come to realize that the gold coats may one day be caring for him. If I'm still incarcerated, you know, when I'm in my 70s or 80s, if I'm still alive, you know, and I get to the point to where, you know, I start declining, losing my memory, I hope I'm a part of a program like this because I know it's going to be a group of guys that's going to care for me, make sure that my needs are met. For the elderly men who are released after decades behind bars, there may no longer be any friends or family on the outside who can provide care. I think many times nursing facilities are a little hesitant to take on a parolee just because they're afraid or they're worried about what sort of behavior could, could happen um, or the person doesn't have the funds to pay for you know, a nursing facility. Um, so I think, unfortunately, many of them are left with, you know, where do I go? How am I going to support myself? What are, what are my options when they get out? Not everyone here will be granted parole. Some of these men will die in prison. I don't think peop a lot of people realize um, how tough it is for a person to uh, be in prison and, and think that they're never going to get out and they're going to die in here. For those nearing the end of their lives, Mr. Burdick serves as a grief counselor in the prison hospice program. We help them to by just being there, you know, so that nobody dies alone in prison.